Instagram has been tripping. Yeah, they just got hacked, right? Uh, I don't really know what the story is, man, to be honest. I just know Facebook damn near owns everything. So whatever happens to Facebook happens to Instagram and WhatsApp and Snapchat and, you know, all the rest of the crap they own. Yeah, I heard like a billion and a half Facebook uh profiles like the information got leaked i heard it was a hack yeah something like that too and now they uh you know they're talking about all this cyber security crap which is crazy because at the same time that's exactly where they're trying to put us on like a you know on one grid it's like well what happens when that whole grid you know falls <laughs> it's like everything does yeah when you make all the books digital right right yeah it's just everything digital, even currency, everything, man. What happens when one thing goes out? You know, if your power goes out, then you can't charge your phone. You can't start up the microwave, which I don't recommend anybody has anyway. But <laughs> my, point, yeah. my point is, is still, you know, it's just, it's where I guess we're not thinking about stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> there was a bunch of people that were, ready to get on and, and uh, you know, the really the whole purpose of today, we were going to just have a kind of a, I guess a freestyle for people to talk about kind of whatever, uh, whether it be their own experiences, uh, maybe some, um, you know, uh, I know for you, Taylor, I wanted to save you and, and, and your sister for the topic that I was, I was talking to, uh, talking to you about. So, I don't really want to get into that. I want I want people who are actually, uh, I would say, either practicing that or really um, looking for information on that to join in for that live specifically. But uh, for you, you know, the stuff that uh, that you were posting about basically kind of like uh, <clears throat> like lineages, pretty much like which is a history. I don't think a lot of people know because everything has been so divided. You know, everything is is. Um, whether you're you're like considered pale skin or light skin and dark skin, but you're from the same, you know, parents, the same, um, same ethnicity, so to speak. Like a lot of people don't have history on that. So I thought like what you were posting that a lot of people don't look into that you could talk about too. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, you know, like they, it's not with the typical school of thought. So it comes off as offensive, but I'm really pointing to the oneness. Like, this is where everything is, you know, this is the connecting vine here. And it it just gets rejected. People don't, you know, it's like, I don't know, I guess at some level, if, if people could see, like, their maker or where they came from or whatever, a lot of people will still just turn it back on that. So, you know, it's right. crazy how that goes. And so do you think that that's mainly um, due to programming? and just not connecting with oneself. Cause I feel like when you connect uh, to, to oneself that you kind of just innately know everything that, you know, that you should, you're connected to, to everything. So you think it's a, a lack of connection with the self that causes people to um, kind of neglect that truth. Uh, man. Yeah. It's a total like infestation, man. At some level, like when you think, when you think about it, like, <clears throat> if you look at it like you know we're born naked so we had to have came from some place that allows us to be naked 
Mm. So if, if the place is warm because it's gonna have to be warm to so you can be knit so baby so you can be in that natural state the way you come into the world that was the equipment that you needed for that environment so it had to be warm so to be in a warm to be in a warm environment you'd have to have melanin or carbon or whatever people identify dark matter or whatever that you'd have to have that so you got to look at like the process of like what you know how would you what is the problem to create, why would someone even leave that? If that is like houses your life, is your cradle of your life, why would you even leave that? You're already at a in, at a crazy disharmony or whatever you want to call it with the environment to even want to leave something like that. So, if you know, you got to ask that question. Like, what would well, you know? Why would someone ever leave that? You know, the uh, what what nurtures them, and. Um, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of answers to that. You know, you could look at it like people left seasonally and were nomadic around the world and just travel with the warmth or whatever. And I think that's probably how people, you know, kept it. You know, that was the order probably that was going on. But at some level, like the only reason you would leave that and like live in some place that is inhospitable to you or a place where you can't live naked because it's inhospitable. If you can't live there naked year round, it's offensive to you, to your biology. That's so, a, I think that's a great way to put that. And I don't think a lot of people probably, uh, they probably think about it and not just think about it, but probably in that way that that's truth. It's like you, you, I mean, sure. You could, you could look at a place like, uh, you know, like let's say Alaska where you're in the cold, but it's not made for you to live pretty much like you said, naked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah you can, tra you <laughs> can travel through. I think uh -huh. you can travel through everywhere, but you just seasonally and you respect the seasons and the movements, like what's hospitable, like where you can be naked or more naked. Mm. Getting you know? like pretty much back to your natural self, you have to be in, in your natural habitat, so to speak. Yeah. So what would make someone leave? The only thing that would make someone leave is if they were just innately, it, the place was that, the, the nature was inhospitable to them. They had a nature to them that was not in symbiosis with that nature. So yeah. you look at, I mean, like, if you just look at any other mammal that uh, inbreeds, any mammal that inbreeds loses color, you know, mm. like any mammal. You look at, you look at dogs, you look at gorillas, snowflake the gorilla, you could look at um, fucking Karen Baskins or Carol Baskins, <laughs> you know, she, you know, she runs the big cat rescue is, you know, she even says it like all, white tigers are inbred they're not purebred a lot of them are blind mm. the people that are more likely to be colorblind on the earth are pale people yeah you know so it's, like it's a it, lack of something basically yeah it's you yeah. know color is vibrance mm. so they're not separate sound and light are not separate so color is vibrance and um it's all vibration so like it, the only thing that's going to make a person not want to be in the warmth of someone that can't tolerate that heat. That'd be somebody without melanin. And, the, and when you inbreed, you create albinos. Mm. You know, I'm willing to wager like what would even, before the inbreeding even happens, that a parasite had already infested the species. Before, to, before you get to the point of inbreeding. Or it had to be massive trauma to make it to where the only thing making a species survive is inbreeding. So one way or another, some kind of trauma has to be happening. But I feel like it's just, you know, kind of like the Eve allegory where people fell from a state of being in total harmony to where somebody ate something they shouldn't have ate. That created, you know, you got a parasite and then it, the parasite just wanted to take your body and replicate it so that it could have more control, more bodies, more power. So th there's a whole process of that happening. You got to look at it like, the only, why would someone inbreed? You know, that would be to hoard wealth. I don't see any other reason why you'd embry other fear and hoard fear because greed is fear. So it'd be to hoard wealth. I would, I would assume like all the elites of the world, you look at the Carnegie's and all of these people, they all got into inbreeding because they were trying to hoard the wealth. They didn't want to give it up. They didn't want to give the power up. Right. So, so that's, look at that's anything when you that, go into bloodlines basically. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying that, the, yeah. yeah, everybody, everybody, they go farther, far back enough every face on earth started whatever the facial structure it is it started with dark, a completely black or dark face to start 
with completely full features. You know, it was, you know, there's like, then there's like the <laughs> fragmented versions now. But that's all from the dilution from the parasite taking over is what I feel like took over the species and caused people to behave contrary to their nature, which produced people that were contrary to the nature of nature. And they left. And in that process, you know, because it, it it's like you got to look at it, too, at the same time. Like if you're just your babies or your ancestors and you get taken over by a parasite and you have a kid unconsciously or in, out of inbreeding or whatever because the parasites took over, then you're just, you know, your ancestors coming back through that inbred, you know, is coming back into an inbred body, a more, you know, broken template. So they at some level that, you know, they, that, it's like you can't even hate them. It's just like you're trying to resurrect that to bring that to the forefront so that you can oust the parasite but like that whole process would be was is is nuts it's like people got like a it's like the face sucker thing almost like with alien where people are really not inhabiting their whole brains uh -huh. so like that's what that's what I, I mean that's my theory on it i mean the, the basic theory is you know people inbred because that's what creates an albino and then the albinos left to more colder climates that they could live in so then uh, anybody else that over time that's like gathering in numbers up there is going to be lighter in skin or albino. So, and even if you are dark, you breed into a group of albinos, you're going to get, you know, just going to, you're going to just can dilute through the generations. It's going to be more and more. The, al the albinism is just going to continue to grow. And then people eating things that are giving them more fungus to take away more color. Because the oh. fungus, you know, if you got, you got three levels of tissue oh. and like, if you have fungus in one level of tissue, it can, you know your skin will be a different expression. If it's in all levels of tissue, your skin every time you know every level is as different. If you have an infestation of fungus, you're gonna have a different expression of skin. And so, like, I feel like people are already starting from like a, a bum start, and then you already got the infestation, and then you're already away from nature. And the, you know what you come from and everything, and you're already, and then you're grouping up together. Now you're getting like in a group think, like, and you're separated from that, you know, and you're in a colder climate to where, you know, you're not going to really see people unless they're just passing by. So like, you know, just as far as like real history, www.com, you know, they're just saying that these people that did that, they clumped up in the in the areas like the Caucasus Mountains and northern India, and and they took over, the, they re infest, they re in, uh, reintroduced themselves into the rest of the population after already having done that. And a lot of people say by force, but I feel like one way or another it's invasion, even if it is just through breeding. But I feel like it's still, bo it's both. Like whether it was the Huns or Genghis Khan, cause he took all the way from Asia to France. The Huns took from Asia to Germany. Like, it really, when you think about white people that are coming out of Central Asia, it's Indo-European languages. That's what they call it, Indo-Europeans. And they used to call it Eurasia for a long time, you know? So it, and it, like, you have, like, Asia Minor and all of that. Like, that's all, like, Turkey and in that area. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of... It's yeah. like... it's that The Caucasus Mountains is right behind all of that. So, like, it's Caucasian anyway. It's Caucasian. So it's like... Yep. It's all there. You know, and... And the different groups of people, you know, because everybody on Earth is black at that point to where you're thinking like before that. It's like everybody on Earth is black. So it's not even a thing to be black. It's just what people are. It's just what everything is. So it's not like you would say like you're black. It's just you're a per it's just your being like it's just this is the norm. But Correct. Yeah. if you got if you have people taking over areas like northern India is taking over southern India and pushing the 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 Dalai people or the Dravidians to the bottom of the cast. It's the same story everywhere. You know, the uh the you know the Hellenist people or the the um the Romans and Greeks, the people that we call that, they came and took over the, the black Etruscans that are already that they had settled in Greece and everything and, and the rest of Europe that was black. You know, they took that over like they were they, they infiltrated, you know what I mean? Over time. It took a you know it's a lot of wars. You know, like the Crusades is a is a race war. So like, right. you know, it's it's a over time. It's like a process of like, you know, the the Turkic, uh, the the Turks in general, but it's definitely the the Khazar Jews because they worked through that whole. That's all one, right? So they like they took the Saudi Peninsula. That was all black people. You can't be in the Saudi Peninsula and be pale. But if you look <laughs> at, you know, if you 
you look at these people now that live in in, in, in Israel, Palestine. I mean, there's still dark people there. You know, still some right. remnants of it. But like, you know, you can't be. You know, you look at the the king of, of Saudi Arabia and his son and whatever. The, these people are mute. They're mutants. They're mutations. You know what I mean? Like if they're a mutation from the original template that was there, right. and it was every face was dark and black. You know, the Arab face. Every, every there was all everybody was black. It wasn't a thing until you had albinos, and then they al then you know you throw the, you know more cream in the coffee and you get all the shades, everything from you know pink, pink, pale to to the yellows and the browns and, and the honeys and the honey browns and the dark and blue black and all of that. Like it's all just different degrees of albinism. Right. It's, it's just shades of albinism. You know, it's like, you know, it, it, it gets, man, it's people, I mean, I bring it up to people, people just, they don't, uh, they can't get over it. So it's like, it's like, an, it's like take, it, take it as an attack, but like, right. You're still ultimately coming. If you're white, you're just, an albino Dravidian, mm -hmm. you know, like, and that's the thing is like once two albinos breed together, then you have like it, the 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 features are more solidified at that point. Then you're having somebody that's like, you know, really albino. And then if that person breeds with a black person, which is all this was happening, they breed, mm -hmm. they bleed with a they breed with a black person, and then it's gonna give you like different somewhere yeah. in between that light spectrum. Malata. You're gonna get a, a, some shade in there. Yeah. So it's like it really is just different levels of albinism, and then you look in it, you like it's just different. Like vitiligo is just a fungus in a different level of tissue, or like eczema mm -hmm. is fungus in a different level of tissue, and like it's all losing color. It's all fungus, and I feel like that's what's driving people to do things. You know, the seven deadly sins, pride and greed, and all of that, and then you're gonna just continually lose melanin through that process. You know, and and there's no one that can control your history but you. So if you look at these people now that are calling themselves white or Europeans or whatever, like no one is in control of their history but them. You know, if, if your great great granddad is George Washington, you know, and you know that there was some, you know, there was a lot more uh, coffee than cream back then, then <laughs> you know, there's nobody that can control that but you, though. Right. You know, you can whitewash all the history. You can, you know, because a lot, you know, it's all whitewashed. Like, you look at anything in the Orthodox Church of Moses and Jesus, they're all dark skinned. And it's the same thing with King George the Third, the last king of America. He, these people was like mulatto, though. They mm -hmm. was light skinned. You know what I mean? They weren't the darkest people. They had already been the, the infestation had already set in. You know what I mean? So like, it it it's just different. It's just different degrees of it, but it's all getting whitewashed because you can only go so far breeding white. That's right. why it's the minority on earth. You can, it's like, it has a limit. Then you're going to get into a lot more Down syndrome and all of that type of stuff. Down syndrome yeah. is more happening to white people and Asians. Yeah. You know what I mean? The hooded eye and everything. That's all because of inbreeding, the fragmentation and mm -hmm. the inbreeding. Like, and that just creates more mutation. And so, like, you so, can only go but so far away from the archetype, from blackness. So once so, again, it seems like what you, because you hit on so many points, but it seems like everything you're saying always boils back down to nature and what is natural because it's unnatural to embry. Therefore, you you then create unnatural um, <clears throat> life, if you want to call it. And uh, also when you were talking about technically the climates, you know, where it's warm and where it's cold, it's that, you know, where it's cold, you're just going to be passing through, but you're not actually... Um, you know, living there and thriving there. And a good example of that is like where you can't grow food, you know what I mean? In, in a place like Alaska where it's snowing, there's 30 days of night, you know what I mean? The sun don't come up. It's like, these aren't places where um, it sustains natural life in that sense. So uh, you probably that don't said, even have to grow food. You probably don't even have to grow food if you move with nature and then you just move with the seasons. Then you're like, all right, we're going to move. It's going to be fig season or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. We're going to move over to here to this season and we're going to move. For, and so it's always abundance. I feel like that, you know, the gross shit. Mm -hmm. That's true. No, that's correct, man. And I really hope the people that are, are watching and listening are actually taking this in because uh, once again, like I said, you hit on a lot of points that um, I feel like it could go over some people's heads unless you're actually listening because I just took in everything you said, and I'm like, this is actually really easy to to grasp 
you know, but I just don't, I don't think the, uh, the simple minded will understand necessarily like everything that you just said in terms of uh, it's, it's always boiling back down to, uh, to black, to the essence, to uh, what is natural. That's what I, what it seems. It just keeps on getting down to. So even when you talk about the parasites, it's like, well, how do you end up with parasites? That is a very unnatural thing. Your body sh is, should be pure. There should be no parasites in it. But one thing that we have to do in order to get rid of parasites is we have to fast and detox. And the reason why is because we've had years of consuming, you know, unnatural things and substances that now have created a, um, a, a parasitic system in our body that now we have to completely eradicate. And that changes your thoughts, that changes your, your actions, your decisions. Uh, these are things that cause an unnatural um, lifestyle, basically, because it's not, you're not fully yourself, like you say. So um, you want to go in a little bit on, um, on uh, parasites and necessarily how we obtain those and um, what are some of the best ways to get rid of uh, parasites? Because there's probably a lot of people who have no idea necessarily what parasites are um what they do and what they can cause and how we can get rid of them uh yeah um you know it's always going to start from you know and with the metaphysical uh and become physical so it the the metaphysical parasite it really just comes from living in third person about your own person like when you start to get obsessed with your own idea of yourself and get lost in your image in the vanity. And that's what creates the hubris and it creates a separation within yourself because then you, it's, it's just, it's pride, man. It's just, it just it boils down to pride. Some sort of pride is getting in the way of the process of life. And as you identify more with the proud thoughts and what comes with the pride, the pride is stemming from an identity that is not the true identity, but it's it, it it has vanity to it. Like if you're if you're identifying with being the person, the limited person, that is just this person. If that's your identity, if your identity ends at your skin, then then you know then that's gonna that that identity nurtures pride. The more that you identify with being the person instead of like all of life, the more that you're gonna nurture pride and get in the way of the processes of life because you're not living from like a more grand perspective of, of what's all happening. And you're seeing all that separation. It's, that's where separation is starting from, from that pride. And pride is just this idea that you can like get away with lying to yourself and not accepting something you know, right now or whatever. It's, it really is just coming from the pride. So the pride is creating a false identity that serves the lower parts of your being or the dense parts of your being, your body or what have you. And so in, in succumbing to that, you're, there's a whole nother line, there's a line of thoughts that come with that identity. The more that you identify, the more it crystallizes. So the more that you're going to identify with the thoughts that, that support that identity or, and, and through acting from that identity as, a, as opposed to just being one with everything, the more that you act from a proud position and from the separate identity, the more that you're going to be exhausted because it, it requires so much energy to support this idea of yourself. It's not reality. It's like Pokemon Go. It's not reality. It's in your head. It's like you're thinking about yourself in third person instead of living in first person and just living in the moment and being the whole moment. Everything is detached and in the third and like how you are perceived, how others perceive you. All of that starts to build and, and crystal. You live from that, from that third person place, like a detached place instead of fully embodying the moment, you know, like that's what spirituality really is like fully embodying God or physically. So like, you know, it's the more that you identify with the separate identity, the more that you're going to welcome thoughts that continue to drain you because it, you're, you're, it's a limited identity. And then it, it, it the more that you pump your will and pr power into that, your energy, the more, it, you, the more that it, it had, it becomes like self-actualized, like a doodle Bob. Like it really is the persona crushes the person the actual, the reality. So the more that you're exhausted like that, the more that you're going to need food that you never really needed because you're just tired. And you, you got to, like, it's like if you got to go to work every day and put on a fake voice and all of these things, it's exhausting because you're not being, re it's not reality. So it, it's so taxing and so exhausting. Mm -hmm. So then you need so much food to fuel that, that identity. Correct. So, you know, Correct. those identities just pile up over time. 
So the parasites really just like this thing that you create and then it creates parasites and attracts parasites. And then those, it just continues if you don't, you know, keep, you know, keep it in check and like really collapse them. You know, upon once you realize that they're getting built, and once you realize you're identifying and getting lost in a loop, you know, that's a limiting psychosis loop to where you're constantly, you know, living from sensory pleasure to sensory pleasure, then you know it's already a bunch of parasitic activity because that's not life. So it's like, you know, it really just comes, it boils down to that identity and identifying with the pride that comes from that limited identity and the self-pity that comes from that. And like, because the pride is going to create shame. That's all. Pride is really just shame in its infancy. You know, people, you know, you people be ashamed of not being able to control something from their personal level. So then that creates the pride is real. That's the be that's like un immature shame is pride. And once pride fully matures, you have full shame. And then that they just that that's one that's the beginning of one emotion and then the dark side of it. It's just how it happens or the yin and yang, however you want to look at it. But it's that's how emotions work. You're going to get the other you're not going to escape the other side the more proud you are the more you're going to be ashamed of the pride in the way that you let pride rule your life instead of reality and, you know and so and so the more that you have more that you live in shame the more that you'll miss opportunities because you're ashamed of yourself so then the more you won't even like take life on and you're not making taking advantage of every opportunity so then that create you know so then that's just going to create more grief and then that, 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 so that grief is just even more limiting. And then the, it just, it creates a crazy cycle of pride, shame, grief. And then people get lost deeper and deeper into the, the psychosis of just sensory pleasures to fill the voids. And every time you do that, every time that you go outside yourself for peace like that and to support something that's not real, the more that you attract parasites, it's like, it's constant. You, you, it's like ticks attract mites. So like a parasitic thing attracts the tick and then the tick attracts mites. It's just parasites attract parasites. So right. if you were to even, if you have a bad food combination, you're going to attract thoughts that were not even going to be in your algorithm. That wasn't even going to be there. Like, but you, you had just, you just attracted it. So now you, you've created it. Like you create, like, cause you can't, it's just a, a, a problem in the process. You created something that you took it on something that you can't really process something that you're not really supposed to be doing. So, same thing with the food. So now you've eaten food that you didn't need because <laughs> you emotionally you emotionally create this thing, like this idea of yourself. It's like you have emotional attachment to it. And that emotion that you're giving to it is really draining your energy. So then you need to eat more food. So all this emotional attachment to the food, it just keeps people in that cycle because then it, it supports the identity. And then that, that food that you don't need and that creates the physical parasites because you didn't need it. So you just right. attract in the physical. So the more that you indulge in these ideas that you didn't need, that were not necessary, the more that you're going to get those physical parasites at the end of that. Cause now you're fueling this identity. That's not real. It's a figment, a phantom in your mind. And then you're taking on actual food to, to fix, to fill a void that's emotional. It's not a physical void. It's an emotional void. So you're taking on a physical food that you didn't need. And so that you, the parasites are going to manifest just because it's food you didn't need. It's just, it's just, there's just law of life. There's certain things that are just unavoidable. Like you can't break laws. They just, they break your body. You, you just break your body. You can't break the law. So the parasite starts from that, from creating these different parasite personas. And then the body is getting you're it's so much identification with the persona that the body the body itself is being drained by this persona. You know, it's it's becoming self actualized. It's really draining your energy. And then it's you know, that parasite is creating parasites. You don't know. Like a lot of people have created parasites that have parasites that, you know, it's like a whole web of parasitic activity, you know, and then they keep people around them that support their idea of themselves. So that's just like the parasite network. All the parasites are communicating with one another. Well, the same way we communicate to each other right now, they're still using the same wavelengths and beams of light to float on to get the messages across is the same. The parasites are, it's no different. Like, it's, we're, they're amongst us. You know, you got fully, fully developed parasites exist at this point as far as humans. They might as well be robots or people call NPCs. Oh. It's just, it's a, it's a human manifestation of fungus or a worm or a fluke. 
you know, like they're, they're really a personification of those things and they're, they'll be around us, you know, like you can't get rid of them or you, if you was to get rid of all of them, you get rid of all the people. Cause it's just like a microbiome, humanity as a species. Like you just have, you can't let anything get too out of control. Like you have to keep everything in check and then everything can live in harmony. You know, if everything's working together, you know, uh, it's really, I feel like that's the only thing that could keep people together is business. You know, I right. feel like that's the only thing, as long as business is square and, and, and fair trade, truly, then I think people can really get along. But that's not what's happening. <laughs> we don't have a real free market on earth. Mm. So I feel like that's what's messing with the whole microbiome is the taxation is the parasites, you know, like mm -hmm. it, it's the same thing. It, it manifests itself in all areas of life in the government and everything. Cause it's just a manifestation of our internal situation. Like colonialism took over the world. Parasites live in colonies. Mm -hmm. So we're le we're looking at the, the, and it's the inner, there's no separation between inner and outer. It's the, it's colonialism happening and it, they just continue to reinvent it. The parasites are con constantly spinning words, like, you know, whatever it is, like, you know, Venmo is venom or whatever. It's constant, like, cutting up of words and spinning them until, like, people have, they've been detached from the original uh, meaning and connection of that sound and what that correlates with. It's been totally spun. So you can, you can see it in everything, in our reality. Our reality just, it keeps getting inverted and spun. You know, it's not, they can't, parasites can never create anything. They can only mimic, you know, so they can only echo you. So it's just like, what do you give them? You know, the more that you identify with certain thoughts and certain things, it's just like ammo that they can just use and like pull those strings in you. And, you know, you got detox on a physical level, mechanically detox, you die tomatoes earth and um, all the earth, wormwood and black walnut and rhubarb and quassia, all that stuff, like cascara sagrada, all that stuff, you should use that mechanical cleansing but that emotional cleansing, like, is the real, that's, that's what's creating the physical parasites. It's really the metaphysical weight of parasites creating the physical weight and then physical parasites. So it's, it really is the emotional voids that need to be filled in, in you know, people, emotional body or whatever. There's just parts of you that need to be uh, brought back together. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's really what, you know, people need to, fill them, you know, fill them gaps in more intelligent ways. There's voids in the day and we're not filling the gaps in intelligent, gentle ways. We're doing it in harmful ways or, you know, harmful ways, typically, you know, just excessive or, you know, ingredients that we could change to things that will be more intelligent and more gentle to fill the void until you're just naturally filling the void with things that don't cost you anything or like, you know, breath work or whatever it is, whatever you're doing, you know, what, you know, yoga or acrobatics or whatever it is that you're into to, that's natural and organic and complete and use your whole body then you um the more that you fill the void with that then you, you're gonna you're just naturally gonna have less parasites and the parasites you do have will just be the ancestors you could trust because you reached a different radius of energy to where you can only it's only going to be certain ancestors that even reach you you're not gonna if you're if you're drinking, you're totally in a hypnotic state where any of them can reach you. Like anybody does that died living in that uh frame of energy. So it, it really is the parasite thing could it's so many so many things that can reach for the steering wheel in your body, like as far as metaphysically and physically, like you just really gotta cleanse in all ways, you know, and seventy percent of detox is respiratory. So breath work is gonna be key. <laughs> I think for a lot of people, um, a lot, and then I'll, and I'll uh, go to this question at the bottom. I think for a lot of people, it has to start physically, um, and that carries over to everything else because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people, I mean, even from my own experience, is I noticed once I changed uh, the physical aspect of myself, it changed the mental and the spiritual, you know? And so I think it's a chain reaction, and a lot of people probably need to start there um, in order to even really attack uh, things like parasites. But um, at the bottom, we have a, we have a request here. Uh, it's, can we talk about spaceships and the agenda on it? Um, I will let you, LJ, uh, take this one over and then uh, Taylor, whatever you want to talk about with that. Yeah, not nah, bad at it, man. Um, what do you want? 
know about spaceships. I mean, what do we what do we classify as a spaceship? Because you know, a UFO typically we think of as a flying saucer, but is basically just an un unidentified flying object. So it's something that we have never been uh, as as a as a as a group of people. <laughs> We think that we know everything that the government is working on in the in the um, in the unknown of a lot of declassified things that came out. I want to say before they started releasing alien uh, alien files. It, um, God damn, I'm forgetting this guy's name. But basically, there was somebody that was leaking files that was showing all type of like chips and just little um i guess you could call them ufos that the government has been working on for decades right and they've been they've been also in connections with like other species who have also created flying saucers and shit and especially in la right when you're talking about spaceships elon musk and all these people are talking about going to um mars and all this shit right all of a sudden and it's just crazy how in 2016 we had like a ufo sighting in la and they tried to declassify it right away and say oh it was a rocket and all this other shit when clearly people who have eyes that see knew that that was an identified flying object but it's just like it's just those kind of instances where you get to you get a little hint of the things that they're actually hiding from you. Like things, things like that are so top, top flight or top notch with technology that you couldn't even imagine. When we're talking about ray guns and we're talking about, you know, liquefied weapons and things like that, the government has already came up with these things. And so spaceships and all these things, we like to think that, you know, it always comes from, um, outer space but it actually comes from within our own government and thing and just projects that they're working on and they're testing and they're also they're also trying to figure out how to communicate with other star systems they're constantly doing that right i like to say like people like nasa i call them never a straight answer because uh if you go to NASA thinking they're gonna give you some information about some shit, you're sadly mistaken. They're not. They're not programmed to do that, and they haven't even showed us. You know, people go all in about the flat Earth and all this shit. Well, nobody's ever really seen a picture of the Earth. All the shit that you've seen on the internet, those are motherfucking Photoshop, imaginary lines, and all type of other shit that they draw on those maps. So it's like a lot of people think that we know about the world map and it's actually inaccurate. So it's like a lot of shit that we think is the, you know, what like we have knowledge of, especially when it comes to Earth and outer space and everything that's happening around us, we're sadly mistaken. Just like there's there's actually people or beings, I should say, that they found on on the moon when Russia or China had actually first landed there, they actually seen like, like, like a whole city on the moon and they were afraid to like get any closer. And this was, it was a recording. I can't remember exactly which country it was, but I know it was a recording that they had where they actually talking about it as they're landing as like, there's people <clears throat> And everybody is like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? And he's like, there's there's literally some people here. And they sounded so fucking scared. And that that right there should already let you know that all this shit that they're trying to do with, with going to Mars and the moon and all this shit, it can eventually backfire on them. Because I like to I like to say like when you get too greedy with shit. You always you always become the first motherfucker to get eaten by something, right? So the fact that they're in a rush to go to Mars and all extra shit, I really think that they're gonna put themselves in a position where they're gonna be unprepared 
if some alien life species come along and they actually see what the fuck they're trying to do. Because I feel like people don't understand is um humans, we're here we're put here on earth and we we are literally like we derive from human noise. And human noise are so called the evolved, the evolution species that we came from or that we derived from, which were like larger humans with larger heads. And they didn't, they didn't communicate verbally. They communicated with their minds. And um, I want to say this happened like ages ago where they, they claim to have conducted a scientific experiment on Mars because Mars used to be very, very, similar to earth they had mountain peaks and creeks and have water on there it was a whole bunch of shit that people don't know about mars but it's very similar to earth and um basically they they were running experiments there and that's when they learned that they uh they learned about it's like two it was two certain genes i want to say that they were um manipulating to to create the human the human uh well, I guess the homo sapien from the humanoid. And uh, I want to also say, like, for 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 uh, just for the sake of the topic, if you go and study um, people that have had, like, alien sightings, a lot of the time these people will tell you that the aliens never once spoke verbally to them. They always spoke telepathically to them. So... It's just a lot of the shit that you like that we think about. You got to kind of take that into play when you're talking about evolution and spirituality and communication like telepathically, because when we're talking about other beings and all these things, you got to really think here. If other beings from other planets are able to make it to Earth, that means that they have been so far advanced with technology and they understand something about the concept of space and time that we human beings are, are still trying to figure out to this day. So those have to be highly frequently like vibrational beings. So the fact that people are able to communicate with these people telepathically, because, you know, like I like to see, I like to say like telecommunication is one of the strongest forms of energy that you can possess as a human being. If you can learn how to master communicating with people with your mind, man, you you will you will literally be able to manifest. You'll be able to be super intuitive. It's just like you're gonna feel like you're all knowing because because all knowing is literally just just being connected to who to who you are, which is truly the whole universal consciousness in its essence. And so when you can understand things like that you'll be able to be more susceptible to this type of information that I'm coming with, especially when they're talking about like spaceships and all this stuff, because I know we like to get really caught up in that stuff, but like, I'm really, I'm really trying to let people know it's levels to this shit. Like it's cool to learn about, you know, other species, but we as human, we have to, we have to elevate right now in this vessel because mm -hmm. We expect to communicate with these other beings, but we can't even get shit right here. Like, if I was an alien flying by Earth, I would be like, what the? Keep going. Please, hurry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a, uh, I want to add a couple of things to this topic before we move on. Uh, number one is one thing I normally say is that uh, everything that um, you can think of already exists. And I remember back in like the early two two thousands, I was watching. Uh, I used to watch Project Cam a lot. Um, you know, whistleblowers and stuff on this stuff. I remember they were talking about uh, a Nazi base on the moon. Um, I think it was Alex Collier. He had some photos of it. And um, one thing I just kind of realized over time was how certain things connect. So, for an example, when you watch Star Wars, I believe it's the Empire is what they're called. If you actually pay attention to them, you know, Darth Vader's people and all that, they are literally based off of the Nazis and they are in space. They want to take over everything. They literally talk like Nazis. 
they act like Nazis, they're dressed like Nazis, their uniforms are, are based off of Nazi. It's like all these things connect. So it was like, where did he get this idea from? You know, where, where did George Lucas get this idea from? And so when you actually start to pay attention to stuff like that, you see how all of these things connect with one another. And so another thing is uh, spaceships. Uh, I remember hearing a lot of times that they, certain people, like they couldn't operate um, the spaceships that they were finding because these were only operated via the mind. And if you study the Merkaba, which um, is basically kind of like a spiritual ship, you know, you can turn into your own ship and travel. It's just like a beam of light. It's like this is the type of stuff that all of these things are based off of. And, and technology such as like Nikola Tesla that he's created were all stuff based on like the magnetics of the earth, you know, the free energy and all these things. And this is so it's kind of like... <laughs> It's like when it, it, the when they say trust the science, the only thing I can think of is like your science, not nature, because nature is perfect. You know, nature is exactly what it is. It doesn't need to be, you know, uh, uh, altered. And so when you when you study nature, um, and you are just you know, let's say one with nature, you realize it, it's so simple. You don't need all these extra things. You know, the idea of a cell phone was created because of like you were talking about telepathy. We we don't need a cell phone. It's a physical thing when we actually can communicate via mind. So they took this idea and created a physical form and got you away from nature. You know, it got you away from natural. You can you can feel the trees, communicate with the trees, the plants, you know what I mean, even animals and they've completely gotten you away from that. So when you look from you have to look inside to look outward to see the connect or the disconnect. And when you're looking at things like spaceships and then you study something like the Merkaba, um, you realize that it's not necessarily a physical thing. You know, you astral project and you leave your body, you can go anywhere. That's a form of travel, you know, but they've created s such things like airplanes <clears throat> in a physical form that, you know what I mean? That, that completely took you away from this. It, it's, they can't spiritually tap into that. And that's kind of where I was getting that. They they created these exterior things because they could not reach that in that in like interior um let's just say evolution, right? They couldn't elevate their spirits enough to astral project and time travel and do the things that that our ancestors were doing really on a, on a regular because they were just so connected to everything around them. It's right. like today, it's like, when, like, you know, to this day, we're still trying to figure out how they made pyramids, how they were already showing UFOs and like um, lizard-like people on the hieroglyphics and all these things, right? And all these artifacts that are supposed to be like predating thousands of years ago. It's because they were understanding how to utilize the resources given by nature. They literally were working with nature and that helped them elevate themselves on a higher level spiritually. That And, and people, <laughs> believe it or not, our ancestors didn't even talk that much back then. A lot of them mm -hmm. did use the kinesis and telecommunication. That's why they were able to be so innovative too, is because they, they were they were exercising their mind more than they were actually doing more physical labor. They were figuring out ways how to connect with things around them and how it connects to them spiritually, because they realized that all of everything around them was, was a connection that, that would lead them back to that higher source up there because as above, so below. So in order to get there, you got to get familiar and grounded and put it in everything down here. If you're trying to focus too much on there and you don't have everything down here in order, then you're just going, you're going to put yourself in this sort of hamster wheel where you're thinking you're progressing, but really you're just staying in one place. You're just moving, but you're staying in one place. And that's why I'm trying to tell people about, you know, when we talk about spaceships and all that, it's cool. Um, trust me, it's interesting. It's some facts out there, but the real spaceship is in the mind.
the mm -hmm. real astral traveling and the things you want to do is in the mind and it is in the mushrooms, believe it or not. The <laughs> mushrooms take there too. And I'm sure T Buzz know, already knows about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now it's funny, man, because I seen somebody said, I'm not doing it right now. I'm not doing it right now. No. <laughs> no, I, I definitely, yeah, no, I, I haven't, I haven't checked in with the mushrooms in a minute. I've been trying to save up for a time so I can keep my tolerance low so I can get smacked again. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, now you're right, man. And, and it really is like, you know, your telepathy is always happening. It's just like your body is probably like, man, like English isn't even, you're not even speaking with like, especially, you know, the more melanated person, like, like you're not even you don't you, your body don't communicate in english like mm. you know what i'm saying it's not you, like the the more original languages would be like click languages languages with no vowels mm -hmm. those are the more original languages that's like nanao valley languages the meadow netter that's the first written language is the meadow netter and it has no vowels you know so like mm. it, I, I don't know like it, you the telepathy isn't it's fucked up because the language is fucked up the way i say a word i say closet you don't might not say it that way so the telepathy is <laughs> right. like you know it's so, it's so many things that fuck with it because this language does not it is you're not even communicating from the most ancient part of you really when you're using it or to that part at least and like that that yeah like if you want to connect with the supreme then like you know uh if you want to ha have those things shared to you because that's like all attributes of god you know like that omnipresence and being able to connect like that uh you know wireless fidelity like that type of thing that's all god sharing that you know the, the likeness of god that is your likeness that is you know so you have to connect with that that supreme likeness and the ability like that you have to you know like i've seen somebody say how do you get new thoughts or original thoughts like you need to, speak, to go train go back to a more original language the fur the more that you can study metonetter or even go back to spanish because that's latin you know go back to greek then go back to metonetter so like the further, you know, that the certain things they can't even like the okie doke is so much okie doke that happens with the English language that would not even happen, you know, like in Latin America, just because the language is a little bit older, you know, like English is just half German and half Spanish. So it's like a slang of two languages, like it's like a chimera language. So like, it's not even like that. It's not even fit for your tongue, really, like with a lot of melanated people. So. I mean, the people that are going to make the most of the language are still going to be melanated people. I'd still rather hear a more full voice speak the language, but it's not communicating to, like, the more ancient parts of you. So if you want, you need to get back to that, you know, like, more of that. The more that you can get in touch with older languages and the metanetters specifically and just acquaint yourself with it, you'll really start to dream in those languages. Like, anybody that speaks multiple languages, they dream in multiple languages. So, like, if you if you if you pray to Christ all your life and speak English all your life, your your dreams can't even deviate too much from that imagination that's where it's drawing from. So you you know if you tap into that ancient part of you like that and really tap into the, you know and and do the etymology on what you are saying in English and just root it back to the Netter because it's all gonna go back because it's, it's that's what the Ro the Rosetta Stone was an actual thing that cracked you know when the, when the French came in to Egypt or to Kemet or whatever what have you Mizraim or whatever. When they came in, they, you know, they, they, they had got, they took the Rosetta Stone and they, they figured out how to uh, decode the Meadow Netter. Then they found out the origin of man. And that's when they said French and Napoleon, all of them destroyed all the statues, knocked all the noses off because they found out the origins of all the man, of all man and what creates white people. And that's supposedly what made, you know, the, the, the butchering of the statues happen. You know what I mean? And like, you know, it sounds about right. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, like it really, but I think that it's, it's language, man. The further you can get back and rooting your language back to more, to less, you know, click language, meta netter, like to that, the more that you can root your language, you know, through etymology back to that and just reduce, then it's just less, just waste, you know, it's so much extraness, I feel like in, in, in the English language, you know, and, and you can't even, it's just stiff. It's just way more stiff and like, it's just keeping certain people dreaming in a certain paradigm because everything is thought in English. So then the dreams are in like this bounds, this boundary. And like, it, the more that you introduce other things into your life, the more that you can, it's like that Simpsons episode when, when Bart was in France and he just started speaking French because he was in a dream. And like, mm -hmm. and it just happened because he's just not thinking about it because it's just ingrained in the body. And that's, and that's, that's there in everybody. You can tap into that. Like everything is really that way. Like you can, you know, like you can tap in. That's, 
anybody that's like a a prodigy or anything like that or, or picking things up like easily like that they're just tapping into the, the part of them that actually did that for a lifetime and then they just align with that because it's just like you you know you're born and you could do anything i guess at that point so you could be a porn star or a plumber or whatever so you align with whatever you know and, or you could be the supreme you however you know and the one like jet lee but mm-hmm. you got to communicate all communication with yourself you know the first communication basis of it ever, all talking is just loud breath so it's all you know you, you just really just how you communicate with yourself is going to yeah. is going to change like you know everything is your whole the way you're dreaming your imagination because the words are triggering the image you know you know let there be light that the whole the word in the beginning was the word or whatever the breath the word is just loud breath that's what's you know creating the image you know the auditory thought is creating is creating the the vibration is creating the it expands and you're getting the more the the denser vibration to where you got a visual off of the off of that and that's like what you see with shrooms the same thing they're like you it just lights certain things up in your brain to where you can see, you can see sound, you know, you can yeah. see, you know, and the same thing with DMT, you know, you're seeing the whole light spectrum. So you can see sound and you can see it's not separate. And like, and it's just like, the more that you realize that things aren't separate, the more that your body is communicating from upper and lower or whatever, what have you, the, the you know, heaven and earth within you, the more that you bring those together, the yin and yang of that, then, then yeah, like your whole community, it's just all about communication, you know what I mean? And, you know, yeah. Kemet is, yeah, Kemet is chemistry is communication. Chemistry is communication. It's just, it's all, you know, that. No, I, 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 that was, I think, beautifully said. There's a lot of, like, I, that's what I'm saying. I hope people really are taking in everything that you're saying, because there's a lot of points that you make that, um, you know, you can kind of pick from and then, uh, you know, and resonate with um, we have a, another question for you, uh, Taylor. Is uh, why is Tao Te Ching um so powerful, and why Hu Ching so powerful? I mean, like, I feel like they, if you know, if you're reading the Metu Netter, it alludes to a lot of uh, a lot of that being all one culture. You know, the Taoist culture really like they're not a separate culture, and um, different people throughout the world maintain certain bits of it, but the Tao, um, I, you know, it's not something that you can really explain in words like that, but the Tao Te Ching is really the best, the best thing that could ever explain something that's so mm. ineffable or so unfathomable or whatever. Like the Tao Te Ching to me, I feel like ultimately these people that wrote these books was black people. I just don't, I don't think that these, you know what I mean? Especially verse one of the Tao Te Ching when he says like, you know, darkness within darkness is the gateway to all understanding or the gateway to all mystery or whatever. That's the beginning. That's the first verse or part of the first verse. So I feel like all these people was, you know, um, just that or I, it, whether it was one person or multiple people, I, and they say it's Lao Tzu is one person that wrote it. But I mean, the Tao Te Ching is besides the Bible, there's no other book that's been printed more than that one. It's got so many translations. Like it's so it's so perfect. I feel like it's a really contained book. <laughs> 81 verses or phrases and it's just it's just i don't know it's the it's kind of like the tree of life in book form and the wild jing is a more ma- masculine take on it it's more detailed so it's like the female and male Wahoo jing is like the male and the daughter jing is like the mother and like i did i feel like the, it's just so it's so insightful you know it just it they use the way that it's using the, the empty space or negative space to explain things it's like it's like the way you can erase something in a way that produces something for you. Like that it's just so many, it, it's such a crazy way of, of, of teaching without teaching, you know, teaching without words or whatever. It's such a, like, I don't know. It's just a beautiful thing that was well put together, you know? And I, I feel like everybody it's it, a quick read, take you an hour and a half at the most to read one. And you read them both three hours. You're going to be a different person on the other side of it. It just, it's so primal. It just brings you back to that primal identity like the true you that was bef- through our life, that's always through our bodies. However, it's always been here. It just connects with that. I, I feel like it. It really is like a living thing that wants to be read. It. It really. I feel like there's no separation between the 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 the, uh, the poem and the poet, and then you know probably not much separation between the writer and the author. I mean the writer and the reader. So ah, shit. Hey Taylor, we got 
10 seconds, and it'll kick us off, and then we'll come back on, okay? All right. <clears throat> right. We'll come back on for for part two. I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. All right, guys. We'll be right back. <clears throat>